event like SARS, mm. which brought the real estate market down. Generally speaking, Singapore is extremely stable mm. with property investments. Mm. You really, in a sense, can't go wrong. Mm. You just need to be, your expectations need to be maybe a little bit longer these mm. days than a few years ago in mm. terms of making money. What kind of expectation you see amongst the Indonesian business people when they try to go to be international investors? Well, uh, a lot of Indonesian business people, you know, they, they love to make money very, very fast. Mm. So their interest is, what can I buy now mm. to maybe sell tomorrow, mm. uh, which is perfectly fine. Mm. Uh, in Singapore, you t especially today, you have to have a little bit longer term viewpoint. Mm. Four to six years mm. is ideal. Mm. Well, um, we are or, or, or all of us are already aware about the economic downturn, slowing down of the global economic situation. Yes. Why are you still, anyway, recommend USA for the property business destination besides yes. you are an American? Person. Well, I'm an American, and in fact, last year mm. I went to America specifically mm. to buy. Mm. And uh, I bought a single family home in, in my hometown mm. of Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the very good thing about buying in the United States is it's cheap, mm. okay? Mm. Dollar for dollar, mm. what you can buy mm. in terms of a single mm. family home or a huge mm. home with land, mm. you really can't go wrong in the United States. Land mm. is available. So it is inexpensive to buy mm. and plentiful. Mm. There are many bargains in the United mm. States if you have cash. But like any place else, you need to do your homework and you need to know mm. what you want and get some information mm. first. But if you have a particular interest, rental property or a second home, it's, there are really bargains to be had in the United mm. States. Procedurally, how easy is it for Indonesian people to do business and investment in the United States for the property sector? Well, it's kind of uh, good and bad news. Mm -hmm. uh, the good news is, is that in the United States, the uh, United States allows foreigners to buy and sell property without restrictions. So any Indonesian can go to the United States and buy uh, and then sell. There's no restrictions per se on foreigners. That's the good news. The bad news is because of the, um, the, the mortgage crisis in the U.S. and a lot of other events that have happened in the U.S., mm. banks mm. are far more restrictive today mm. on lending money. Mm. So if you're an Indonesian going to the U.S., you can buy, mm. but if you need a mortgage, if you mm. need a bank loan from a U.S. bank, that will be much, much harder these days. Mm. Their paperwork and they're actually really looking to restrict mm. mortgage loans. Mm. They've gone back the other mm. way from being too generous, mm. you know, three, four, five years ago mm. to now being very, very restrictive. Mm. So if you're looking for a bank loan in the United States, you may have to be looking for a lot longer period mm. and supply a lot more information. Because mortgage issues still becoming a problem sometimes in the United States of America, yes. learning from the past what has been Correct. happening. Correct. Speaking about the openness of the market, how open a country could be in terms of welcoming the foreign ownership? Well, I would say, uh, given everything, actually one of the most open countries mm. with no restrictions, mm buying, selling, mm. uh, come by, mm. getting loans is probably New Zealand. Uh, in terms of property, they have one of the most open mm. uh, markets in the world. Mm. The challenge with that is mm. it's New Zealand. It is a long way away mm. and the New Zealand economy is uh, not the most robust. Mm. But in terms of encouraging foreigners to buy, mm. uh, they really make it easy, mm. very, very easy. Mm. Other places, United States, Australia, Singapore, um, have their plus points. Mm. Singapore is relatively open, mm. but the government works very fast mm. to try to cool the market and add tax when mm. it feels that the market's overheated. All right, Mr. Russell, we still have another segment to talk about sure. this, sir. Make sure you are still with us on Economic Bus. After this, we are going to talk more about investing in foreign property market. Stay tuned.
Halo pemirsa, apa kabar Anda hari ini? Bersama saya Aktivita, Anda akan set... Bringing you all the topic and economic issue. Mencoba menghubungi Bapak Desian Kori, pengamat ekonomi. Selamat sore Pak Desian. By discussing business policy and regulations, live with the expert. E-view, only on MNC Business. Anda dalam program Outlook, dialog seputar prediksi laju ekonomi dan bisnis investasi mingguan. One program that will help you to look into your business future. We'll give you references for your investment and for you to make the right deal. The Outlook. Only on MNC Business. Anda menyaksikan Movers and Shakers. Brings you the market players, the movers and the shakers. With the story of their achievement. Including today's market movement. Top loser antara lain Astra International PBK ACSI. Movers and Shakers. Only on MNC Business. You are still with us on Economic Buzz. We still bring our discussion about investing in foreign property market. Mr. Russell, related to the restrictions, some countries could be very open, as you <coughs> mentioned, in New Zealand. Unfortunately, uh, geographically and from the location, it's not really prospective. Maybe yes. yet, at this time. Who knows, maybe later on, they could be pro prospective as well. But why, at the same time, some countries <coughs> are a bit you know, tight and not flexible in terms of the restriction regulation. Let's say Indonesia. Yes. Are you are you going to say also that Indonesian people, Indonesian government especially, are a bit over worried about the more uh, foreign owner coming in to our Indonesian property? How is it going? Absolutely. I mean, uh, if we now turn the tables around and talk about foreigners buying in Indonesia, mm -hmm. <coughs> basically there's the land law of 1960, mm -hmm. which prevents foreigners from owning mm -hmm. land in mm -hmm. Indonesia outright. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Um, the laws were changed in 1996, 97 mm. <coughs> to allow foreigners to leasehold mm. uh, properties. Mm. So today, if a foreigner wants to, uh, quote, own a mm. property, there are ways to lease it for 25 years mm. and then another 25 years mm. and then 20 years. Mm. So a total of 70 years. Mm. <coughs> um, however, the foreigner still, uh, this is a very mm. restrictive market. Mm. Indonesia is still very protective mm. of foreigners owning real estate mm -hmm. or buildings, let's mm. say, here. Now, there is some discussion even this past week mm. that those laws would be tweaked again very soon to allow foreigners to actually own condominiums and mm. apartments, to mm. physically own them, mm. however, not have a right to mm. vote as an owner. Mm. So still restrictions, still mm. uh, a lots of... Uh, uh, differences mm -hmm. to make a foreigner question about buying mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Not talking about legal things, you know, what kind of protection, Indonesian business people as well, on the contrary, when, when they want to go into the international market of property, becoming the investor, are we going to get also that kind of protection, <coughs> either from our government and also the other destination investment? Well, I could say pretty much from the Indonesian government, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to get any protection mm -hmm. anywhere outside of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. But uh, the challenge is, you know, people can so-called make a lot of money mm. in developing countries. Mm. I'll take two examples, Vietnam and China. Mm. And you may have heard stories of people making amazing amounts of money, but you don't necessarily hear the stories about people losing yeah, a lot yeah. of money because they're a foreigner mm. and they have no rights, mm. particularly in, in countries like China and mm. Vietnam. On the other hand, developed countries like Singapore, Australia, and the U.S. Mm. do protect buyers, whether they're foreign or not. Mm. So again, in terms of risk-reward, the risks of buying property for an Indonesian mm. as a foreigner are relatively lower in places like Singapore, Australia, and the United States. Mm. The laws do protect you as, as a foreign buyer. What kind of preventive actions uh, business people should prepare earlier prior to the transactions or investment, you know, in, 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 in order to avoid the, what do you call that, 
the very significant loss. Right, or the gotchas, yeah. where I didn't know that, and then you have to sell at a lower price or exactly. lose money. Mm. It's the same as what uh, we started out with. Do your homework, mm. and, and that's the beauty of the Internet mm. uh, these days, is that it's very easy mm. to obtain a lot of information mm on the internet online mm. about property markets mm. in countries like mm. Singapore, Australia, mm. and the US. Uh, so do your homework, uh, go online, mm. um, and uh, find out what the gotchas are. Literally, mm. you can type, you know, what are the gotchas mm. about mm. buying property mm. in mm. Singapore, the United States, mm. or Australia. So that's very important. Mm. Uh, when you do actually make a move, um, for Indonesians particularly to buy in the United States, mm. you do have to be prepared to have a lot of documentation about mm. your finances. Mm. The U.S. Uh, will ask lots of questions mm. uh, about the foreign buyer today. I see. As the VP of International Operations for Property Guru Group, correct? Yes. Uh, what aspect of assessment, if I may say, you put on your analysis and research into certain countries and markets of the property sector? Because it could be different for sure, U.S., Singapore, Australia. Certainly. Well, Property Guru Group is headquartered in Singapore, and we, we were created six years ago in Singapore. Mm. So that is our home market, and we are an online portal. Mm. So we not only have property listings, we'll, we provide a lot of information and mm. education mm. to consumers, uh, first in Singapore. We have expanded over the last year into three other countries, mm -hmm. Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia, mm. where we are here. So we provide information for the buyer mm. uh, in these mm. four markets. In addition, outside of that, mm. because we're a regional portal, you can find information about buying homes or property mm. in Australia and China and Vietnam on our website. Mm. Uh, then going beyond that, we have links to other websites that specialize mm. in property in, say, mm. North America or Europe. Mm. How is it progressing? People going online when we are talking about international oh, well, business? You know, <laughs> the, 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 the internet usage in Indonesia mm. is, you know, exponential. Mm. The use of mobile phones mm. is exponential in Indonesia, mm. and the interest in property mm. is also exponential. Mm. So, in this marketplace, mm. it, it's a great market to be in, and I think you can say the same around the region. And as you are going in a portal business, what do you expect from Indonesian onliner? We expect more people to use our site. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, last month we had about 1.2 million people mm. using Ruma.com mm. here in Indonesia, and we expect that number to mm. grow. So we are trying to do our part to provide mm. as much information mm. as possible mm. so that Indonesian investor can make the right move. All right, Mr. Russell, we are going to continue after this one, sir. Thank you. Economy Bus will be back soon with more of you from Mr. Harold G. Russell. Pemirsa kejadian dramatis telah terjadi untuk pertama kalinya peringkat utang sebuah negara superpower. Open the curtain of success by giving you the winning combination. Double A menjadi double A plus. Sepertinya memicu pelemahan global. With dialogue full of trend and market analysis. Apa yang sebetulnya dilihat dari investor uh, kepada negara kita secara makro? Uh, kalau kita perhatikan sebenarnya investor ingin memperhatikan. Don't invest your money before you enter the dealing room. Only on MNC Business. Anda menyaksikan Movers and Shakers. Brings you the market players, the movers and the shakers with the story of their achievement, including today's market movement.
perusahaan top loser antara lain Astra Internasional TBK ACSI Ngamah 1200 rupiah Movers and Shakers Only on MNC Business Issues around Indonesia From politics, economy system, society, and their culture Picking up the pieces from every angle of information Ready to covering the entire topic of one event Special report Only on MNC Business One talk show that will give you all of the analysis of your capital in the stock market. How competitive is actually the Indonesian pool? Because we have, we have plus the latest business and economic issues that will help you to make the right step for your capital investment. How competitive is actually the Indonesian pool industry? Let's talk about your business on eBus. Catch it only on MNC Business Channel. Who do you first? Do you best? You are watching Economic Buzz with Mr. Harlow G. Russell, the Vice President, International Operations for Property Guru Group, to share his view of the topic that we bring up in this talk show. What uh, Property Guru Group could have actually in giving, let's say, assistance to the newcomer, especially of yes. Indonesian business people who are interested in going global for becoming the property market investors? What kind of assistance? I'm asking about can how how far can we use the property agent service when we are talking about global market? Well, there's property agents and then there's portals like Property Guru mm -hmm. uh, in Singapore or Ruma.com. So on our sites, we are very, very interested to help people and give them information. Mm -hmm. So for instance, on the Indonesian site mm -hmm. called Ruma.com, we have Berita Property, mm -hmm. which is a lot of news and content. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we have a large editorial team mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. actually there to create news and information about mm -hmm. property, particularly about trends mm -hmm. and tips and information. This is really important to us as a group, and we mm -hmm. do it in every country. Mm -hmm. Then um, how to deal? This is sometimes becoming the biggest constraint as English is not our uh, mm. main language, let's say, or mother tongue. How to deal with the foreign language agent? What can we do in preparing ourselves and related to well, English speaking? Yeah, agent? that's a tough mm. one because, uh, for instance, in the United States, uh, you'll be primarily dealing mm. with an English language agent. It would mm. be rare mm. to find a Bahasa speaker yeah, in sure. the United States. Perhaps a little bit more mm -hmm. frequent in Australia, but still, mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to be buying in any of these countries, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to have to speak mm -hmm. the language of that country. For instance, if you were to buy property in Thailand, you mm -hmm. really need mm -hmm. to know how to speak Thai mm -hmm. uh, in order not to get burned. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but most Indonesians these days do speak English as a second language, mm -hmm. uh, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say take it slowly, and make sure that you really understand what you're signing, the documentation, mm. which can be quite extensive in the United States, can be much more simple in mm. Singapore. Uh, there's no way around that. Mm. Uh, other than in Indonesia, you will probably not find documents in mm. Bahasa Indonesia related to property. That will be another biggest question I'm going to ask to you, Mr. Russell, when we are talking about understanding the contract right before we signing. Are we still uh, having this kind of case because of we are not well informed and then there are uh, bad case happen just because yes. we don't really understand what's been written there, the regulation, yes. the clausal thing? Typically, though, the good news is, is that in places like Singapore, Australia, and the United States, the rule of law mm. uh, has been adopted, and mm. things are relatively transparent. Mm. And the contracts that you sign for, let's say, a single-family home in the United States mm. or a condo apartment mm. in Singapore are going to be fairly straightforward, and there's very little that could go wrong. Yeah, yeah. Where it goes wrong is in the fundamental do I want to buy this kind of a mm. property mm. and am I paying a price mm. that's mm. fair? Mm. Uh, so again, doing your homework in terms of mm. the market, mm. what's the market value and what can I expect to get either in rental mm. or in capital gain is probably the most important piece mm. versus knowing all the fine details mm. in countries like Singapore, mm. Australia, New Zealand or the United mm. States. 
That is not the case if you were to buy mm. property in China mm. or Vietnam or Thailand. Mm. Then you really, really have to be much, much, much more careful. And cautious as well. Correct. And as a part of your market analysis and research, um, I'm sure you, uh, you know, gradually understand the character, the certain approach to Indonesian business people. What could be the biggest or the main drive for Indonesian business people before they are doing the investment and transaction in the property sector? Bef beside, of course, they are becoming very profit oriented, making as yes. much as money as possible. Yes. Well, I mean, uh, that that tends to be the case with everybody, but. Um, Indonesians tend to invest overseas for several reasons. One, of course, to make money. Uh, another is uh, if they have their children going to school overseas mm -hmm. and they want to buy a property for the children while they're going in school. Mm -hmm. That's very, very common in mm -hmm. the United States, Singapore, or Australia. The other is to provide for some kind of retirement or second home, mm -hmm. uh, which is very common for Indonesians mm -hmm. to buy in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So they always have a place to go rather mm -hmm. than expensive hotels. So these are typically the main drivers. Uh, and then you have the professional investor mm. Mm. who uh, maybe has investments all over mm. and just has a huge portfolio mm. of, of private, private property. Mm. What other breakthrough, particularly from property guru group, is going to have you know, in moving all of the business online? If we can say most of the business going online, because portal could be sometimes very difficult for Indonesian business people as well. Well, one of the things that we're trying to do here is make use of online searching for property very easy. Mm. So you have to make things easy because if it's difficult, you or I or mm. anybody watching mm. is just going to stop and they're mm. not going to use a mm. website. Mm. So ease of use uh, and being intuitive, oh, I'm searching for mm. property where? for mm. how much mm. and to make it simple to use and easy to read mm. is also very important. What do you call that? User friendly? User friendly, yeah. of how course. How user friendly yes. is um, the property guru group? I already oh, seen well, the rumah.com for sure. Yes. Yeah. We, we think we're the most user friendly mm. but uh, that's a very subjective mm. of course. I guess the way to gauge that is Property mm. Guru Group, with its websites and seven websites in four mm. countries, has won a lot of awards yeah. uh, across the world for best property website, mm. which obviously means we're doing something mm. right, mm. and others are judging many websites mm. across the world.